Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, this is lesson 2-1, checking accounts. A lot has changed in checking accounts in over the years. This book was written in 2014. Uh, second edition 2018. Now this is 2021 while this video is being recorded and that's another four years and a lot has changed since then. Um, so anyhow, no, example one is filling out a deposit ticket. So this says Allison currently has a balance of $2,300. So I'll just write this over here, $2,300. That is her balance in her checking account right now. She deposits $425.33, which is her paycheck, okay? That is right there. Notice there's a column for dollars and a column for cents with this uh, line separator. So 425 and 33 cents over here. She has a $20 rebate check. So this is right here, no cents, 20 and zero, zero. And a personal check for $550 that she's putting into her checking account. And that is right there. Okay, so there's a subtotal line, which means you add up all of your additions because these are all deposits. So it's going to, you add them up and you get this subtotal of $995.33. It says she wants to receive $200 in cash. So this is less cash received, so that's subtraction. And so finally, she is going to end up with a total of depositing 995.33, but taking 200 of that in cash leaving her a total of $795.33 being deposited into her account. Now over here, it says sign here for cash received if required. And she signed it because, oh, it's up here, because she is getting cash back. She had to sign this. And I would also put the year when I'm putting a date, okay? And so there is a deposit ticket. Now, things have changed over the years. And if I get a check that I want to deposit into my checking account now, I don't even have to go to the bank. I take out my phone. I open my bank app. I take a picture of the check. I sign the back for the e-deposit only. And I take a picture of the back and then I submit it. And they accept those photos as your deposit. It's really cool. So we don't even have to go to the bank anymore to make a deposit. Okay, so anyhow, she has $2,300 in her account. She just added $795.33. How much will she have in her account after this transaction? Well, that's just adding $795.33. And so I need to put cents over there. And so we need to obviously borrow from the previous digit. 10 minus three is seven, nine minus three is, oh, I'm not subtracting. Made a mistake there. We're adding zero plus three is three, zero plus three is three, zero plus five, zero plus nine, seven plus three, carry the one. She now has $3,095.33 in her account. Okay. Okay, now it's a check your understanding. Pause the video, see if you can do this. Come back and we'll see how you did. All right, so let me go to my highlighter. Lizzie has a total of X dollars in her checking account. She makes a deposit that adds of B dollars in cash and two checks, each worth C dollars. She would like D dollars in cash from the transaction. So she's gonna keep some from the transaction she's gonna keep. She has enough to cover the cash received in her account. What that means is she, D is not going to be greater than her total account balance because she doesn't want to go in the red is what it's called. She wants to keep a positive balance in her account. Express her new checking account balance after the transaction as an algebraic expression. Okay. All right. So... <clears throat> She has a total of X dollars in her checking account. That is her current balance. She deposits B dollars while depositing ads. So we're adding B dollars to our checking account balance of X. So it's X plus B. And she's adding two checks, each worth C dollars. So that'd be plus C plus C. 
she would like D dollars in cash from this transaction. So she's gonna pull D dollars out that subtraction, okay? We wanna combine like terms. And so this would simplify to X plus B plus two C minus D. Okay, now it says to express it as an algebraic expression. So an expression is uh, a bunch of terms a group of terms that are not set equal to anything. If this said equals a total balance now, then this is not a, an expression, it's an equation. So don't use an equal sign here. Here is our expression and we are finished with this right here. Okay, example two says, Nick has a checking account with the Park Slope Savings Bank. He writes both paper and electronic checks and makes EFTs. Okay, EFTs are electronic fund trades, transfers I mean, electronic fund transfers, which means if he has a bank account with, let's say Bank of America, and he also has an account in Navy Federal or something like that, then he can do an electronic transfer from one account to another bank's account. So that's an EFT. For each transaction, Nick enters the necessary information, check or, con or confirmation number, date, type of transaction, and amount. He uses E to indicate an electronic transaction. Determine the balance in his account after the star cable company check is written. Okay, so here it is right here. So let's Start with $3,672.27. That is his balance carried over from the prior page. And check number 3,271 was written on May 5th to DeWitt Auto Body for a car repair. And it cost $1,721. So you take that amount and you write it over here. 1,721 and zero cents. And then you subtract seven minus zero, two minus zero, two minus one, seven minus two, six minus seven. And that would have dropped down to two to borrow from that. So we're down to $2,951.27 after this check clears. And when you do that, you usually, once it clears, you would put a check mark. Check number 3272 on May 7th was to Kate's Guitar Hut. Okay, bought some guitar strings for their guitars um $32.50 for I don't know how many packs of strings that would be hopefully it's more than one uh so $32.50 7 minus 0 12 minus 5 this is now a 0 so 10 minus 2 is 8 this is now a 4 minus 3 is 1 9 2 so we're down to $2,918.77 then there's a paycheck deposited on May 9th of 821.53. Okay, so I'll put that in black, 821.53. Okay, seven plus three is 10, carry the one. Seven plus five is 12, plus one, 13, carry the one. Eight, nine, carry the one, 10, one, four, Nine and eight is 17, carry the one. We're back up to $3,740.30. Okay. Uh, that doesn't make sense. So I just stopped right there because I started out with $3,600. I spent over $1,700 and I put $800 in and now I'm above. So I made a mistake here. So when I subtracted three minus one is two, I had to make this one a zero to get that to 17 to subtract nine. So what I'm trying to say here is this two should be a one. Okay, so let me fix that. I apologize. So that's one. That's why we always check our register. So we have 1,900. And then when I add what I added, um, I do not have $3,740. I have $2,740. I should not have more money than I have with a deposit that's less than what I spent. Okay. Okay. So carrying on, 
And then my Verizon wireless, my cell phone bill is $101.50. So I put 101.50 and I subtract zero. 13 minus five is eight. This should be a three now, this should be a nine and my R10, and then I borrowed from that. So I'd be a nine minus one is eight, and three minus zero, seven minus one, and then my two. And then finally, Star Cable Company, my TV bill is $138.90. So 138.90, zero minus zero, uh, make this a seven, nine, three to two, 17 minus eight is nine, uh, six to five is 12 minus three is nine, and this is a five minus one is four, and I have $2,499.90. Okay, so once I've done that, now let's check your understanding, pause the video, see if you can do this, and then come back. It says Nick writes a check to his friend James Sloan on May 11th. For $150.32, what should he write in the check register and what should the new balance be? So if my balance was $2,499.90, that's my balance carried over from the prior page. That's where these values come from. So now it's down to $2,499. <clears throat> he wrote a check. The last check he wrote was 3272. So this check number would be 3272. Three, he wrote it on May 11th, 5-11. Transaction description, James Sloan. Okay, James Sloan, $150.32. So $150.32 goes over here and we subtract, this would be an eight. 10 minus two is eight, eight minus three is five, nine minus zero is nine, nine minus one, whoops, nine minus five is four, and four minus one is three, and bring down my two. So now I have $2,349.50. Okay, now extend your understanding. Would the final balance change if Nick had paid the cable bill before the wireless bill and explain? All right, so pause the video so you can do this. And assuming you did, here we go. All right, so what they're saying is um, pay the cable bill before the wireless. So the cable bill is right here and the wireless is right here. So basically what would have happened is this $138.90 would have been written here and the $101.50 would have been written here. So you would subtract 138.90 first and then subtract 101.50 the second time. And obviously subtracting these in different orders is still going to yield the same results. We would still get 2,499.90 because we would take 2740.30 and subtract the 138.90 first and that would give me um, $2,601.40 and then subtract the 101.50. And when I subtract this, I get zero nine. And this is now a zero because I made this 14. Uh, so this is five. 9, 10, 9, 9 minus 0, 4, 2. And as you can see, the totals are the same. So it doesn't matter what order you put in them in the register, you're going to end up with the same total. Okay, so that's the end of lesson 2-1, a very short lesson. So there you go. Now you can go do, uh, what do they call it after that? In the book. applications.